Now before we get started, yes, CinemaSins has covered this movie, and yes, this is an homage to their formula and my zombie fanatic take on what they do. But considering they spent only six minutes on this movie, I felt it necessary to discuss it from a zombie fanatic's point of view. Also, I won't be comparing it to Max Brooks' book of the same name, I'll be hinting at it, but they are in no way related, as stated by Brooks himself. And, yeah, I can, and I can say snarky things like, well, maybe they should have followed the book. <laughs> That was the plan. And then I went to see it, and it didn't suck. I specifically thought I would hate it because it was so different from the book, but what shocked me was it was exactly because it was so different from the book that I didn't hate it, because it was just somebody else's movie. It had nothing to do with me, so I was completely emotionally divorced from what I was seeing on the screen. Now, without further ado, 85 freaking seconds of logos. Generic stock footage of the world while audio of news footage plays. Nearly two minutes of world stock footage, animal stock footage, and news coverage to force the idea that something is going to happen worldwide because the news is scary and clips of ants and numbers is somehow symbolic of the upcoming zombie tsunamis. Another thing, none of those ominous news clips really introduced anything necessary to the plot and was acting as just filler ominous material set by the musical score. The opening really wasn't necessary. Three and a half minutes in and we are finally starting the movie. The most hammy and generic way to have a main cast. A loving family with two overly happy children. There's nothing wrong with the formula, but the whole nuclear family thing seems to be the easy way out when writing disaster or horror movies. It basically means no one in the family will die and we will have a few, oh no, they're gonna die moments, but not really because happy endings fill seats. Getting a lot of deja vu from the Dawn of the Dead 2004 remake. News excerpts on a music montage kids slowly opening the door on a couple sleeping in a bed. Of course, we're still gonna have the news is running in the background to reiterate how something bad is gonna happen or ominously be told through broadcasts. The family stops having positive reinforcement just in time for the girl to ask what martial law is, mainly to give background on Brad Pitt's character and show how the news is telling you how shit is going down. I'm surprised the two girls in the back are having these bonding moments of 20 questions with their parents and aren't doing Snapchats or TikTok videos. I know this was released in 2013, but social media was still a thing. This is just providing unrealistic expectations for children. Conveniently turning on the radio to hear a full origin story on the virus's link to rabies. Mild jump scare. And so begins the zombies somehow causing explosions for dramatic Michael Bay effect. As CinemaSins states, the truck is nowhere to be seen in the frames beforehand, and there is no sound as it comes barreling through a traffic jam? Really? Convenient the truck driver somehow got bit and was still driving his big ass truck for his foot to be stuck on the gas pedal to be going down this linear street to give the pits a clear way through. No one else in this traffic jam has the same idea to follow? I want my blanket! My blanket! Shut the hell up about the damn blanket! Why the hell would you take your eyes off the road in this chaos? Your wife's got it under control. Come on, man. Now, these scenes showing the zombies and people in the streets gives me motion sickness from how blurred and all over the place the camera is. I want to see zombies, not motion blur and nausea, damn it. With how long this family is taking their time and how fast these zombies are, how are their slow asses not tackled by now? Here comes the number 12 train. What? In order to make it easy enough for everyone of all ages to understand, the girl's teddy bunny counts to 12 while postgraduate Steven here zombifies like a gymnast. The family conveniently finds an unmanned vehicle with the keys in the ignition, with no other survivors fighting to get in or steal it. Conveniently, the RV gets to go down a street where there is no traffic jam and they can go through casually. <laughs> If it's intense for a thriller, suspense, or disaster movie, you have to use the Inception Bois. I'm gonna put in a sin each time this sound effect plays. One of the kids has a medical condition to add tension in a disaster movie cliche. Conveniently, a redneck with a hunting rifle just happened to be driving his beat-up, barely functioning RV in the middle of Newark so the girl could find a gun to give to her dad. This grocery store somehow isn't overrun with infected already? They sprint at high speeds, can climb to high surfaces, and infect people fully within 12 seconds. Good to see the hunter from Left 4 Dead is calmly handing out prescriptions. Stormtrooper in training. Oblivious hobo foreshadowing. I'm gonna go ahead and remove one sin for at least doing something preventative, but I'm gonna add another one for not suiting up your kids and wife the same way. <laughs> These things are constantly clicking their teeth or grunting, but this one zombie goes stealth mode for a jump scare? Getting really tired of zombie movies pretending like zombies don't constantly walk around going, 
<sighs> but suddenly they can just jump at you and they're just being completely quiet. Bullshit. The zombies climbing the stairs below would have totally caught up while Brad Pitt was spending a good 15 seconds mashing those brains in. Now I appreciate this sin. It was actually great for Brad Pitt to actually test and see if the blood getting in his mouth would infect him. Minus one sin. Well, that's pretty convenient that this large bushel of zombies show up just as the rescue vehicle arrives. We'll have to put the Hispanic father in the in memory of credit section of this campaign. All of this expositional dialogue on the virus would make an explained or why you wouldn't survive video so much more easier to write. First mentions of zombies came from South Korea. So is Train to Busan a prequel? And of course, Brad Pitt is the destined hero to literally save the world. Mother Nature is a serial killer. <sighs> So did these soldiers get double killed by just a tackle? One of the dumbest ways to die I have seen since Borderlands 2 when you kill Professor Nakayama, tripping and shooting himself in the face after a whole conversation about clues to a disease's weaknesses. Well, he's not our best hope anymore. <laughs> Colonel's here, huh? Oh yeah, he's right here. <laughs> double tap, damn it! Haven't you seen Zombieland? Put on the world music. The day is saved. This guy would be good at zombie sins. I'm gonna borrow a little tidbit from the channel Your Movie Sucks, but how the hell does this guy not only get a grip of his teeth and not only pull it out, but do so without profusely spraying blood everywhere? There's just a little bit of blood in the scene, but in real life, if you ripped a tooth out, that you would be gushing blood left and right. Because, of course, his wife calls at the worst time. Jerusalem is the only place on the planet not infected, and they let Brad Pitt in for clearance because he says he is doing something for the UN. I'm gonna go ahead and add a sin for every time this guy says zombies in this short scene. Zombies. 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 One less zombie to fight. The thousands of zombies outside the walls just now decide to start swarming to the walls because people are singing? The truckloads of people in the cage tunnels weren't a dead giveaway? They didn't hear anything? beyond those walls? Are you kidding me? It seems like this scene was just so Brad Pitt would have to get away from more zombies. It seems like a major cop-out to just have these zombies full force tackling people in a motion blur. It's like they didn't want to spend the time on the makeup budget for so many people, so they decided, hey, what if the zombies were super fast and people can't even see what they look like until the end of the movie, so they're just constantly running in a blur in the first three quarters of the film. Later on, they say people who are sick, guessing the kid has cancer going through chemo due to the bald head, aren't detectable by zombies, but in this instant, he would be trampled to death. Hell, just a few scenes back, they were climbing over each other just to make a corner. Yeah, they avoid the sick, but when you're hauling ass around corners with dozens in front of you, you're not gonna have the time to try to weasel your way around a kid. Brad Pitt stops this woman from turning by cutting her hand off, but wouldn't her screaming attract more zombies to the area? Brad Pitt's phone is low on battery, but he doesn't care to explain that he has a hunch that sick people could be the workaround for this disease and instead wants to be ominous about getting to a health organization without explaining anything. Not a single person on the plane is suspicious of the girl with a wound. No one gonna check for bite marks. No one care about safety. Is no one gonna check the plane in case one zombie got in? The stewardess casually opens another part of the plane without thinking of a potential stowaway. Thanks, you just screwed everyone here. One suitcase draws the attention in that whole mess? Really? A tiny flimsy ass curtain with a bunch of suitcases and stuff wasn't stopping them from entering before? And somehow this particular zombie somehow lunges at Brad Pitt while they are crashing with a giant hole in the plane? How did it not already get sucked out? Brad Pitt and his new girlfriend's chair are the only ones that turned out alright besides the one zombie that's trapped up over there. How convenient that the place where they crashed was in limping distance 90 minutes in and we finally get some glimpses of what a zombie can actually look like instead of motion blurs or recently turned with foggy contacts in. For a zombie movie, this sure is lacking on the gore factor and I'm watching the unrated cut. Shutting the door in the nick of time because every zombie movie needs that scene. I will say the clicking they do with their teeth is generally a neat trait. Minus one sin. I roll. How does the zombie lose track of Brad Pitt while staring right at him in a sealed room? Do these zombies have vision based on health? Wouldn't they have a sense of smell for this type of thing? Like dogs that can smell cancer? I'm not understanding how this all works. Before I save the world, I always drink an ice refreshing Pepsi. 
Mmm, Pepsi. I don't understand how having a disease works. They actually avoid Brad Pitt here, but at the same time, the singular zombie from before acts like he's not there until he's closing the door on him. Do they do they see him, but they don't acknowledge him? Are they blind to him? They just don't explain this. Is their sight based on smell? Or is their sight based on hearing? Luckily, the vaccine for that horrible disease he injected himself with was in that box that he brought with him. So we need to have vaccines of dormant meningitis, smallpox, or H1N1 in order to just not be seen? Wouldn't people who have had meningitis vaccines be alright then? Most schools and colleges in America require meningitis shots, so wouldn't large portions of people like in college or school have those camouflage scenes? I would assume there's thousands of people that would just have the common flu that would be fine during a zombie apocalypse. I'm gonna add three to four sins just because they're pretending like the whole population isn't gonna be minorly sick. The movie finally remembers that he had a family, but honestly, I'm okay without having screaming kids every two minutes, so hey, minus one sin for that. This isn't the end, not even close. Please keep telling us it's not over so you can have ample room to hype up a sequel, where I'm gonna go ahead and say that the zombies in World War Z 2 will mutate to where they can actually see past the camouflage, oh no! And I'm gonna go ahead and add 10 sins here because this film felt like 2012, but with zombies. A family survives by constantly finding new vehicles, they end up on a ship, the father somehow survives, and they have a happy ending where everything is hunky-dory. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another 10 sins because they butchered the original idea by Max Brooks by shoehorning in Brad Pitt and trying to make the actual dead zombies more threatening and less realistic than the infected in 28 Days Later. Max Brooks, my fingers are crossed that Hollywood doesn't butcher your work like so many original original pieces out there. Loyalty to wishes three. No. No. I'm kidding. No! Because it was just somebody else's movie. It had nothing to do with me. So I was completely emotionally divorced from what I was saying on the screen.